بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد We can never underestimate or belittle the da'wah of Ahl Sunnah, which is to call to Tawheed, call to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, unity in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and earth. That's da'wah to Ahl Sunnah in the most vaguest sense, is that they're vaguest sense is that they're calling to Allah, not to themselves, not to their group, not to their sect or jama'ah or political party, that they're calling to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're ordering people to know and understand who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and how to worship Him properly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, That I have not created mankind in jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa'budullaha wa la tushriku bi shayin. Worship Allah and do not associate any partners with Him. There Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the beginning of the ayat, Allah has made ifbat. He has commanded us. He's affirmed, made an affirmation. Wa'bud. Wa'budullaha. Worship Allah. Wa la tushriku bi shayin. And la here is, is for nafi, is negating. Wa la tushriku bi shayin. Worship Allah alone and do not associate any partners with Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever we keep that in perspective, that everything we do, no matter what science, no, the reason you pray, the thick that you're learning, the various rulings about this or that, what is it like to be a Muslim minority in a non-Muslim society? How should I make Hajj? Everything is related to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Fasting the holy month of Ramadan, the science of Jarwa Ta'deel, cr criticizing and praising individuals, knowing who to take your knowledge from, all of these the head of, the goal of all of this is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly. To either preserve the religion from innovation, from kufr and shirk and zandaqa, and ilhad coming into the religion, or to maintain the tawheed, the, the worship of Allah alone. That's what He ordered us to do. And whenever, as I've count, said in countless lectures and countless uh, little kelimat or little words of encouragement and so forth that the scholars say that whenever we hear a command that it shows us that that's an obligation a command from Allah or the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is evidence that that thing is something you must do, it's an obligation. They say, Al-Amr Yufid Al-Wujub That the co a commandment shows us that that thing is an obligation. And likewise, when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala or the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prohibit us from some, something that shows us that the origin of that thing is that it is muharram, it is haram to engage in that activity. So an-nahi yifid the tahrim that when you are prohibited from something 
in the Sharia by Allah and His Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, then that shows that that is something which is prohibited, a very simple principle. Then between those things are, are many other rulings. Something can be permissible, something can be leave from being an obligation to something that is mustahab, depending on if we find other evidence from the Sharia, which illustrates that for us, or shows that something was haram or prohibited in its origin, but yet there's something, uh, other textual evidence from the Quran or the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam to illustrate for us that that action or statement or what have you has left from being something which is haram, prohibited and that you will get a sin for, to something that is disliked, that is not sinful, but it's disliked. It's, it, you, you, know, you won't get, you'll get adjured from leaving it, leaving those things. And that's where a lot of times you find the doubtful things. It's better to leave them. As the Prophet Sallallahu said, Al-Halal Bayin Wal-Haram Bayin Wa Baynahuma Umura Mushtabihat the Prophet ﷺ said, The halal is clear, the lawful things are clear. They're clear to us. And the prohibited things, the haram, is clear. And between them are doubtful things. That many people are unaware of. Letting us know that those doubtful things, they're doubtful. Why? Because we don't have a, a lot of knowledge about them. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Kathir min anas, meaning many of the people, not all the people, meaning that's why we go back to the ulama. That's why we go, go back to the scholars. They invite us to Tawheed, not to them. They invite us to good, to commanding the good and forbidding the evil. So that l lets us know that our call is to Allah. That we need to focus on worshiping Allah and realizing and purifying our intention. As the Prophet ﷺ said, in the Verily actions are tied to the intentions. You know, letting us know that our actions are related to our intentions. So we have to purify our worship. Make sure it's pure. And we're worshiping Allah alone. Make sure we're doing these things to come closer to Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many sins. Bless us all with ikhlas, with thabat. Bless us to fast the holy month of Ramadan and have it accepted and to benefit from the holy month of Ramadan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.